Welcome to Raising Adults, the groundbreaking parenting podcast that starts with the end in mind. We're your co-hosts, Dina Thayer and Kira Dorian. We created future-focused parenting to take families from surviving to thriving. So join us as we help you stop raising kids and start raising adults. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of Raising Adults. We're glad to bring you a bonus today because it's been quite a while since we talked about this topic, and we're glad to have really an expert in the field. So way back in season one, Kira and I chatted about screen time and gave some practical tools and tips for handling that as a future-focused parent. But we're looking forward today to taking a little deeper dive into that and into some of the nuance and complexities, especially with how pervasive technology is, and that is such an ever-increasing thing. So we're going to talk about that today, screen time take two with extras. How are you today, Kira? I am good. I'm really looking forward to this because, as I'm sure so many of our listeners know, if your kids are remote... I mean, my kids, you know, we talked about this in season one. They have like 30 minutes of television a day. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, boom, they're on their computer for the whole year and on platforms I've never heard of. Um, And even like my daughter has this little like online group. And then sometimes the leader, this has nothing to do with school. It's like a fun class that she takes. And sometimes the leader then has them go to this other spot to play like an online game Mm -hmm. and she had an incident where she ended up in the wrong room with a whole (gasps) bunch of people and they were like swearing and it was like wow you know just stuff that I have never had to deal with before and this has been really on my mind this year and I know I'm not alone so I am super excited to talk with Bill today yeah (laughs) this is me out (laughs) and I think even if you are becoming well versed I mean we're even hearing like new terms like zoom fatigue like even if you're good at it you can make mistakes Sienna went into a zoom room recently for a job interview and she was a week early (laughs) Oh no! I mean, so I think we're just all, we all need all the tips. We, we're getting weary. And, and as parents, especially, we've got to also be thinking about those things like safety and are we aware of the different avenues where there can be issues of privacy and mm-hmm. just actual health and safety for our kids too. So I think this is really great. So I am going to introduce our guest and then we will just dive in and let him drop all the truth bombs on us. So Today, we have Bill Brady with us, and in a career spanning 20 years as a marketing executive, Bill has owned two marketing agencies serving global brands, including Google, HP, Netflix, National Geographic, Sony, and Pepsi. And now since 2018, he has focused on providing children with healthier solutions for using technology. Most recently... Bill co-founded Trumi Wireless, a mobile phone company designed for children, and he serves as the company's CEO, and we're going to get to hear more about Trumi in just a little bit. Bill also holds an undergraduate degree in public relations from Brigham Young University, where he served as student body president, and he's earned a master's degree in business from the University of Utah. On a personal note, Bill and his wife, Heidi, have been married for 20 years, have five kids, and live in Alpine, Utah. So Bill, thanks so much for being with us today on Raising Adults. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you both. So, so very excited to be with you and Really excited to talk about uh, these important issues around kids and safety and empowerment with with technology. Yes, all such important things, right? So, you know, we were chatting a little bit before we hopped on to record, you know, and have some familiarity with our show. So, you know that Kira and I always start with our why, and we like to have our guests do the same. So, I'd love to hear kind of your why, maybe as a dad and as a marketing professional, what's your why for getting into this work with kids and helping them have safe options for using technology? Well, you're spot on. It definitely starts with my role as a dad first. And uh, in parenting through the complexities that, that frankly, every parent in America is dealing with right now, if they have kids under the age of 18. And that's, you know, how do I how do I keep my kids safe from all of the potential dangers that are that are out there? You know, so there's there's that side of it. It's the safety side of it. My real why comes down to this just absolute conviction that if we as parents can can nurture our kids and and, and help them along, 
that they have just limitless potential. And, uh, and as a company, that's kind of our philosophy. We believe in the, the limitless potential of every child to learn, do, become anything. But they, they need the hand of, of parents who care to, to help them do that. And, uh, and certainly when it comes to these issues around technology and best practices, uh, it's a great, it's, this is one of those, those areas where as parents, we've, we've got to be involved a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, so, you know, my kids are nine, I have twins and um, they're at that age where I'm starting to realize that that involvement's going to be really important. Up until this point, you know, I could control so much of it. Like, may I watch a show? No. <laughs> the end. Um, but now a lot of it is out of my hands and they're starting to want to engage in all these things. We, they have friends who have phones. They have friends. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. nuts to be in this phase. So I'm kind of curious, first and foremost, why is the monitoring important? And and secondly, you know, for a parent like myself, as a great example, I'm sure Dina would agree, I, I really want to be respectful of my kids' privacy as well. And so there's like this interesting line there of how do I monitor in a way that is healthy without stomping all over their right to their privacy? Yes, that, that's, that's, the, that's the balance. That's the conundrum right there. You know, to, to start at the beginning of that question, the, the why, why do we need to worry about monitoring? Um, I immediately think of just how much more complex it is today for, for us as parents than it was for our parents. You know, I think back to when I was 10 years old and, you know, my dad's biggest concern was the Dukes of Hazard. He didn't, he didn't like Daisy's shorts and, <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't like the, you know, what he called a, an irreverent disregard for authority. And, you know, so he, <laughs> You know, <laughs> my parents were concerned about the shows I watched and the movies I watched and, and, and the music I listened to. But that was about it. You know, they kept an eye on my friends and, and made sure that I was hanging around kids that would be good influences and, and not try and, you know, get me into negative stuff. But, but it was pretty straightforward. And you, you fast forward to today and... Uh, you know, for me, that's a, that's a span of 30 years, um, 35 years since I was 10 years old. And, and now with the proliferation of technology because of the internet, because of mobile technology, because of social media, it's not two or three influences that parents have to watch for. It's 30 or 40 or 50. It's, there is stuff coming at our kids from every direction all the time. And I, I frankly, you know, <laughs> I've reached that age where my kids know more about all those potential influences than I do. They, they hear about the new platforms before I do as a parent. And uh, there's, just, there's just more complexity. So with all of the different influences that exist, uh, we as parents have got to be aware of, of, of what are those things that our kids are uh, engaging in who are they talking to? Because it, as you know, it, it could be complete strangers, and we don't know what those people's intentions are. Um, but you raise an essential point, and that is how do you have this involvement? How do you have this monitoring relationship without driving a wedge into the the relationship with your child? Uh, and that's the balance because. I think kids thrive and, and they can build confidence when they're trusted. So we don't want to, we don't want to send the message, hey, I don't trust you. I have to look at everything you do. I agree. That's that's not the feeling that uh, that we would ever suggest for for a relationship. Um, I think it comes down to having a, I don't know if partnership is the right word, but I think it's a good word. It's a constructive productive, respectful relationship where parents and kids can talk very openly about potential dangers, about concerns. Uh, you know, kids should be able to talk without any fear about the, the challenges they're dealing with. Um, and, and it's hard to get kids into that mind space and emotional space if they don't feel trusted. 
So it, it, that's it. I think there is a, a need to, to monitor, but it's got to be done in a way that the kids feel like they're part of it, not that they're being dictated to uh, at every turn. Mm -hmm. That is so important. And it is a tough balance to strike, but I think you're right. I loved what you said about what it fosters when our kids get that sense that we trust them. That is an important foundation to lay. And then what's so nice is then it's really coming from this place of, I absolutely trust you. And yet one of my jobs is to keep you safe. So we're also going to work together to protect you from possible issues here. So I, I know that I have olders. And so my youngest is 17 and we've definitely had to have those kinds of conversations. So I appreciate what you said there because leading with the sense of, you know, I really do trust you to be responsible, but this is the partnership about, about monitoring what's going on. And you're right. There's the amount of influences we're having to monitor. Has it just creeped up a little, it's grown yes. exponentially. So it's really critical. So moving into kind of what parents can watch for, I'd love to hear what are the biggest red flags? What are the things to look out for when we're thinking about technology and our kids? And I'll admit I have a particular and personal interest as kind of a tangential but related red flag with kids. You mentioned social media. And I think in, in that area in particular, in those platforms, I know that one of the things we sometimes come across are things like sexting or cyberbullying. So I'm curious, are there ways to prevent that? Can we at least mitigate it? What could we be doing as parents? So if you can talk about both of those, maybe starting with what are just the red flags we can watch for? And then how would that relate to some of those bigger issues? That would be wonderful. There are numerous issues to be watching out for. Some of them, I think, come with more urgency. You know, there are the issues, the potential dangers that it really is, you know, life or death or, you know, uh, the potential for lifelong consequences if, if a child gets into a bad situation. Uh, some of those you mentioned, uh, the uh, sexting, for example, is a, an alarming one. The study I just read said it was 44% of girls and 37% of boys by the time they're 16 have engaged in, in sexting. And, you know, on a, from a legal perspective, you can imagine the, the consequences there, if nothing else, the, the legal aspect of that. But then the, the danger of what that does to one's esteem, what that does for the, the opportunity of people to take those pictures and publish, publish them anywhere, uh, to use them for extortion. You know, so that, that's one of those, one of, that's one of those ones that, that's, that's at the top of the list. We've got to make sure that, that we're, we're being very active and involved in teaching our kids about that danger before they're faced with it. And that, that age is becoming younger and younger that we've got to start having some of those tough conversations. Um, the bullying one you mentioned is, a, is another one. Again, I think back to when I was a kid and bullying has always existed, but in the past, there was the, the potential to get away from it or not have it on 24 seven or have limited reach with it. And now with cyberbullying, my goodness, it's not a group of three or four kids that might be bullying someone. It's their whole social media following. So it could be thousands of kids that are involved in picking on someone. I would suggest to parents that they be watching for changes in their kids, uh, you know, whether it's some of these really serious issues, whether it's uh, just the general stress, anxiety, and depression that are now linked to social media in kids, whether it's an addiction to pornography, whether it's an addiction just to, to online use in general, you know, parents should be watching for changes in habits. You know, kids that are withdrawing emotionally. They don't want to participate in all the things that they've loved in the past. They perhaps are becoming angry or irritable or sleeping a lot or, uh, you know, wanting to stick to themselves and have more privacy than they have in the past. Those are, those are some of those early things that parents can be looking for to 
perhaps dig deeper and find out what's really causing this. You mentioned earlier too that you know we kind of need to start this these conversations in the monitoring, for lack of a better word, um, earlier than maybe we even think. When I mean, I have nine year olds. Like when when should I have done this? <laughs> Well, when should a parent start that monitoring and what age is appropriate to start paying attention to that stuff? This is going to be shocking to you. Yesterday, I, I had a meeting with a, a gentleman uh, who works for an organization called Fight the New Drug. It's an organization that shares information, scientific information about pornography and shares people's stories about overcoming pornography addiction to help other people make their own decisions and have an awareness. And, and, and they do a great, a great job, a great work. And we were talking about some of these issues and their research over 10 years shows that pornography companies start targeting six-year-olds. That's the ideal age they're trying to capture kids. And that's a lot, that, that, that age, that number should be alarming to every parent, right? And, and I certainly would not have expected that when I had my, when I had my first kids, I thought, oh, those are issues we'll deal with when they're teenagers. The truth is now if, if kids are consuming content online, we should be monitoring. That makes perfect sense. And it is alarming how that age is only trending downward in terms of when children are being targeted, that, that, that number is getting smaller, not larger, which is really crazy. So we do know that you're part of, you know, an integral part of a solution for this. And so we'd love if you'd share a little bit with our audience about TrueMe and what that can do to help parents who are navigating this. This is really my life's work uh, through, through experiences I've had over the last few years. Um, I've really poured myself into trying to find a solution, something to help parents have a trusting relationship with their kids and provide kids with a solution that is not just safe, but is also empowering. You know, something that, that really does help prepare kids for the future, something that helps them to become great adults. And if you look at the, the kids' space uh, in the mobile, the mobile industry and, and the solutions that exist for, for keeping kids safe. And there's a spectrum, a, a variety of different solutions. On one end of the spectrum, you've got, hey, let's just give our kids the, the iPhone 12 or the latest phone of their choosing. And it's wide open and it's the Wild West and they can do whatever they want. That's not the right approach. <laughs> uh, I, I, I promise that. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got some solutions that are very safe. Uh, because they're extremely locked down. Where I got onto this this uh, goal and in, in pursuit of a, a different way uh, to provide a, a solution for parents was when I watched my own daughter with one of these very safe phones. Uh, I gave it to her when she was 12, and she could talk and text only. So I didn't worry about her browsing the internet because there was no browser. And at first she was excited and I felt great as a parent. My wife was pleased. And a month into this experience, she never had that phone with her. And it was defeating the purpose because I couldn't get a hold of her and she couldn't get a hold of us. And I pulled her aside and, and I said, hey, Jenny, give me some feedback here. Help mom and dad understand why you don't use your phone. We thought you were excited about it. And she said, well, dad, uh, kids don't really talk on the phone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she said, and I don't text that many people. Um, and the phone really isn't useful to me because there's nothing else I can do. And, and this particular daughter has a great talent for photography and a great talent for graphic design. And so she was looking for apps on a phone that she could use to help her with her hobbies. And of course, as a parent, I love that. I, I love to do anything that gives my kids the chance to develop their, their talents and build confidence and discover new passions. And, and I realized this phone wasn't doing it for her. And I started asking the question, is there a better way? Is, is there some way to give kids a safe phone, a locked down phone, but give parents the opportunity to graduate kids into additional levels of functionality? 
as their kids grow and mature and their needs change and, and they have the ability to take on uh, more responsibility. Because really that needs to happen if we're going to have them leave the house ready to be great adults. They have to l- have learned discipline and self-control and they have to know how to use technology wisely. So that's where the, the, the vision of Trumi was born. And we created an operating system that would do just that. It would give kids a, a, a high quality device at a kid's price. Uh, you know, we partner with Samsung for, for our hardware, but still give kids a phone that's under $200 but, and starts with a completely locked down experience talking and just basic text messaging only but gives parents the opportunity to control a few important things. The first is to uh, whitelist the phone numbers that are available. So they can, you know, if you, do, if you choose to turn on that function, then you might say for a young kid, you can only talk and text with these 10 people. And maybe with an older kid, it's 25 people. And maybe for a 14-year-old, that control's gone altogether. They can talk and text with whomever they like. You know, and from there, you can turn on MMS messaging so they can do group text and picture text. Uh, From there, you might say, you know, my son or daughter, they need email for school and I want them to learn how to use email responsibly. So you can turn on email, but still have the opportunity to whitelist those email addresses that are available. Uh, As they progress, it might be I'm ready for my son or daughter to have a browser and up front, I'm going to determine which domains they can go to. For a young kid, it might be three. For an older kid, it might be 50. But as a parent, you have the, the opportunity, again, in partnership with your child, to determine what, uh, what those domains are. And, and then the final thing is that we've curated um, a library of, of what we call Kids Smart Apps. These are apps that we vetted. Uh, to to guarantee that they're going to be safe, that there's no back doors for predators, that there's no back doors for inappropriate content, but they are great for learning and creativity and helping helping children uh, grow and 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 evolve and, and learn confidence. So that's what that's what we've uh, that's what we're launching right now is is Trumi Wireless, uh, and uh, it's really differentiated by that operating system. It reminds me of our funnel, Dina. Exactly what we talk about just with kids across the board, but specific to technology. That's very cool. Where there's increasing levels of privilege and in this case, maybe apps they can use or websites they can go to as they demonstrate increasing responsibility. So it really, it really does kind of align with that. That's a great point, Kira. The funnel is perfect. We need to have Trumi wireless phones that say raising adults on the back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We need a partnership, Bill, because yeah. I feel like that's that's amazing. Like what an interesting um and perfect link to what we talk about on this show all the time. I, I, mm-hmm. We could we could figure that out. <laughs> I know that as you were talking, I was thinking, well, I wish this was around when when we were starting to hand out phones to our people because yeah, great what timing I, on my end <laughs> yeah you're you're in the zone kira because right, yeah. what i what i like is the 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 gradual and yet consistent up leveling so it's not just going to plateau out too bad so sad because they do need to learn how to engage with this stuff i i think one thing that was feedback we got from our kids is this is what's happening and i do need to learn to use it and but it's about offering that out in the appropriate chunks at the appropriate time and when they're demonstrating appropriate maturity. I mean, so that's that's the piece where it's it's meted out more appropriately instead of just here's the buffet, eat any entree you want. I mean, that's going to yes. make you sick, right? So that's that's really helpful. So thanks for sharing with us about that. And thank you even just for coming on and telling us a little bit more about some of these nuanced elements of technology, because like I said, Kira and I just scratched the surface with ideas about how much screen time your kids should have and those kinds of things, but the monitoring and the partnership and, and looking at things like cyberbullying and sexting. I mean, this just took it to a completely different level. So thank you so much for sharing with our listeners, Bill. Thank you. I appreciate the chance to be on and to get to know both of you and, uh, and share some of these, uh, some of these perspectives. Uh, like I said, every family's dealing with it. And, uh, and we hope to be part of that solution for them. So, Bill, as we wrap up, can you tell our audience 
of future focused parents, how they can find out about True Me and connect with that if they're interested in that resource? Absolutely. So we just launched our first website at www.trumi.com and Trumi is T-R-O-O-M-I. And uh, all, all of our social media channels are live now as well. In fact, we, uh, we just put our Instagram live on Monday and in the first two days picked up 1,000 followers. Amazing. Uh, so we're definitely, there's definitely some great uh, traction and buzz out there. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, listeners, hop on that. If you're in the, in the phase where this could be helpful for you, or if you are, as we hope, a future focused parent, and maybe you have youngers, but you know that technology is on the horizon, or you've got to start thinking about when are we going to do a phone? How's this going to look? Definitely check out and learn about Trumi Wireless. That might be a great option for you. And we will, of course, be back on Monday with a new episode for you as well. And we look forward to having you join us then. In the meantime, make sure to follow us on social media at Future Focus Parenting. We're on both Facebook and Instagram, and we look forward to being back with you soon. Thanks so much for being with us today. Raising Adults is produced by Kira Dorian and Dina Thayer and recorded partially in Kira's laundry room, partially in my coat closet. Editing by Allison Preisinger and music by Seattle band Hannah Lee. Thanks for listening.